May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. April 17, 2024, Wednesday of the third week of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you, that even though you have seen me, you do not believe. All that the Father gives to me shall come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will not cast out. For I descended from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me, Yet this is the will of the Father who sent me, that I should lose nothing out of all that he has given to me, but that I should raise them up on the last day. So then, this is the will of my Father who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How does your perception of Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist influence the depth of your faith and belief in his divine presence? For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. John 6 verse 40 Do you believe in Jesus? Unquestionably the answer is yes. However, to believe in our Lord is something that must deepen with every passing day. Therefore, if you do have faith in Jesus, you can also admit that you do not have faith enough. In this gospel passage in which the bread of life discourse is continued, Jesus calls us to do two things. First, we must see him. Second, we must believe. Let's start with the first. When Jesus first spoke these words to the crowd, they did see his physical presence. But many of them did not see beyond the surface. They saw his miracles, heard his teaching, but very few saw the deeper reality of Jesus as the Son of the Eternal Father and the Savior of the world. If you are to believe in our Lord and all that he is, then you must first see him. One of the best ways to foster this holy sight of our Lord is to gaze at him in the most holy Eucharist. When you attend Mass or spend time in adoration and look upon the most holy Eucharist, what do you see? Do you see the Eternal Son? Do you see his holy divinity? Do you see your God and the Lord of all? As we stand or kneel before our Lord, present in the Most Holy Eucharist, it's easy to become distracted. It's easy to allow our minds to wander to the many other aspects of our daily lives and to fail to see the Eternal Son of God as He is present to us. Reflect today upon the way you look at our Lord. If you want to deepen your faith, your belief, then start with your sight. Start by considering how you look at Jesus, present in the Most Holy Eucharist. If you are blessed to be with him this day at the Holy Mass or in adoration, examine the way to see him. Gaze at him. Make an intentional act of faith in his divine presence. Acknowledge his Godhead, his glory, his holiness, and his sacred presence. If you can look beyond the surface, and lift the veil that covers his glory, then this holy gift of sight will give way also to the gift of profound faith. Let us pray. My ever-present Lord, I thank you profoundly for the way you come to me in the most holy Eucharist. I thank you for your divine presence and glory. 
Help me to see beyond the veil of the appearance of bread and wine, so that I can see more clearly your divinity. As I see your divine presence, dear Lord, help me to profess my belief in you, with greater certitude and faith. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration, as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.